Okay, so this is what we're making today. There's two ways to get it. The first way is the first link in the description. It'll take you to my website store. Or the second way is you could just follow the tutorial here step by step and you can have it that way. So let's get started. Either way, you're gonna need Reactor. It's a repo of third-party plugins made and developed by the community for Fusion. And there are so many effects in there. It's just, yeah, it's amazing that it's free. And if you don't have it yet and you're trying to learn Fusion, you should have it because there's so many good effects in there. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well where you can download that. Once you have it installed, you're gonna wanna open it up this way. Go to Workspace, Scripts, Comp, Reactor, Open Reactor, and it's gonna open up this window right here. And this is all of the different effects that you can download. And uh, you'll notice a few check marks in here for mine. This is the one you want right here, chromatic displacement. You could scroll down till you find it or just type it here. Either way, you wanna check it and press install. You're gonna have to restart DaVinci Resolve after you install it and after that, you're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna start with a blank fusion composition here and jump into that. You're gonna wanna start with a back row node as always. And this time I'm not gonna set it blank. I'm gonna make it a white color, kind of off white here. That's good right there. Now, just so that you could see the light refraction in action, I'm going to add a merge node here, add some text, use a text node, I'm gonna choose my font. I want a black color or a dark color against the white background. Uh, I'm gonna say test, make the letters bigger here. Okay, so now we're gonna start building the glass shape. What you wanna do is you wanna take a background node and set the color to pure white, just like that. Now, you're gonna wanna take a rectangle mask, okay, and connect it to the mask here and shape it in kind of like that pill shape by setting the corner radius all the way up. In the meantime, just so that you can see what we're working on, I'm gonna highlight the background node here. Now, Apple doesn't use like a wiggle effect in their glass. Uh, you can add it optionally, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, just so that you can use this liquid glass effect for more than just emulating Apple's liquid glass. You could use it for something else in the future as well. To do that, all you wanna do is add a displace node and add some displacement via a fast noise node. So right after background, I'm gonna search displace. There we go. I'm gonna take fast noise, add that in here, add that into the green foreground on displace. I'm gonna highlight the displace node by pressing number two so that it, I could see it in my viewer. Now in fast noise, just so that we could see the wiggly effect, I'm going to up the seethe rate here just a little bit. And you can kind of see if I zoom in here, there's this wiggly effect going on on our shape. If you wanna fine tune that, you can highlight the fast noise node. I'm pressing number two on my keyboard. This is what our fast noise looks like. I'm gonna up contrast here and lower the brightness just a little bit, bump up the scale, and then add a little bit more detail. So now when I go back to highlighting the displace node, that's what it looks like. I don't quite like that, so I'm gonna change things a little bit more, lower the scale a little bit. There, these are my settings right here. This is my result. You don't have to use this. I'm not going to use it. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So in the meantime, I'm gonna turn my displace node off. So now I just get back to my regular pill shape rectangle here. After this, add a blur node. So you can go up to your toolbar here, the little teardrop, add a blur, take your output of the displace node if you chose to use it or just the background node if you didn't want the displace and set the blur size to 11. After the blur node, you want a matte control node. The matte control isn't too far on the toolbar up top. It's just this one right here, or you could just search matte control, add it in here. Now it's at this point, I'm gonna connect our liquid glass effect into our main flow line. So I'm gonna take a merge node here, add it in, connect matte control. I'm gonna highlight merge to here so that I could see that in the viewer. And now with everything added and all of our effects that we have so far, this is what it looks like. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you're in your matte control node and squeeze this threshold towards the middle. So you wanna bring up the low and lower the high. And you can see how that kinda of gets rid of this glowy effect right here. It kinda of brings it in a little bit. So squeeze this in towards the center and just a little bit more to the left. I think this is fine right here. Then you wanna raise gamma just a little, contract the contract expand slider just a bit. And it's at this point now that if you have more than one shape you're working with, they'll have a sticky connection. So I'll demonstrate that for you now if you want to have more than one liquid glass element on your screen. I have my pill shape uh, and I have a circle here and I'm just showing this to you for demonstration. Uh, you can see that they kind of have this like sticky connection kind of effect right here, right? And we've made this organically. Now, just so that we can correct this image, the next thing you wanna do is take the output of your blur node and connect it to the garbage matte input on matte control. The garbage matte input is kind of like the light gray one here. It's not white, it's not green, it's not blue. And if you hover over it, it says matte control one dot garbage matte. What's cool about nodes is that on the output of one node, you can 
have two different lines connecting to two other nodes. In this case, we're going into the background of mat control and into the garbage mat. Then you'll notice your shape starts to look like this. It looks a little more transparent. And after that, the next thing you wanna do is come back in your mat control and this option here for post multiply image, check that. Now watch what happens when we check it. That kind of outside glow kind of goes away a little bit. And you can see here, now we have like a bubble kind of texture. So we're getting there, we're getting to the fun part. In the meantime, I'm gonna delete this other circle right here. I just wanted to have that for demonstration purposes to show you kind of like that sticky kind of like gooey effect. Now back in your mat control, drop down the garbage mat options and click invert. Then change the low and high values till you get a look that you like. I'm gonna keep mine right here for now. We could always change it again later. So now it's time to add that chromatic displacement node I was telling you about earlier, the free effect from the repo of effects for fusion called reactor. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this merge node right here and I'm gonna set my output now to media out. That's what we see on screen. And next I'm gonna search for that node, chromatic displacement, press add. This node is awesome. Uh, I'm gonna replace the merge node with this node. So now this node is built into the flow line. I'm gonna connect the output of mat control into the foreground input of chromatic displacement. And you can kind of see the shape of our pill rectangle right here. Looks a little blurry, right? So the work is almost done here. So now in the inspector for chromatic displacement and the options here, take height, up this just a bit, and then take refraction and lower refraction. You see that? When you lower the refraction, you start to get the glass effect and it's sick. So now your shape is refracting light. And it'll be easier to see now the difference that height makes. So you don't have to make it super tall if you don't want the, the light bending. Next, you wanna find a spread value that you like. So this here kind of changes the shape of the refraction. Now in this instance, less is kind of more. You don't wanna overdo it. So I'm just gonna do that right here and then increase the light power. I like to put mine up to 30 all the way. And you can see the difference that that makes is it gives the glass shape a little bit of depth as though there were light shining into the glass. And you can also rotate the light angle. So I like to move mine a little bit so that the glass has a little bit more definition. Chroma controls is cool because you're free to adjust any of these however you like. So for example, distortion softness is within the shape of your glass, how blurry do you want the image to be? So watch what happens when I pump this up it gets blurry here, like it's foggy glass. I don't really wanna do that in this case. So I'm gonna drop this all the way down to just a, just a little, like not, not much. Now watch what happens if I take lens aberration X and pump this up on the X axis, you see RGB split. Now I can move this around and you can see how it dynamically reacts to the movement of light. Same thing on Y, works the same way there. I don't wanna to do too much with this, just a little. And that's it, you're done. You can have fun with this. And what's really cool is that you don't need to keep this pill shape. This is just what I did here to show you exactly kind of like the shapes that Apple was working with. But if you wanted to do a different shape, you're more than free to. So for example, I'm just gonna delete this rectangle here, add a circle in. Now you get the same effect from the circle. And because everything is made here after the fact, all of these nodes are already in place. You can make the shape whatever you want and the effect doesn't change. So I have now kind of like this magnifying glass effect here. And even more so than that, if you wanted to actually magnify, you could go into the scale property here in chromatic displacement and turn that up. And now it acts even more like a magnifying glass. So this is literally digital glass that you can add into your effects library. What's also cool I wanna demonstrate is that if you come up here, you can create your own spline. So check this out. And there, I've made my own shape, you know, and you can animate the shape. Or if you want the edges to look a little bit better, you could take this B spline here, connect this and use that the way that it works where it makes the smooth line for you. And everything is all good, look at that. And again, you can animate this to your heart's desire. So now if you're looking at that, like I don't wanna put that together, I don't wanna take the time to figure out how to do that every time or remember where certain things go, or remember where to put the shape, whatever your reason might be, if you choose to just simply purchase this plugin from me, I have everything labeled here. So this is just background, the optional text, your liquid glass effect here, these are the nodes that make the effect, et cetera, et cetera. Everything's all labeled. You don't have to wonder about anything and it's drag and drop and you're good to go. So if you're still learning Fusion and want that convenience of having a plug and play plugin option, this is for you. And you can find the link just down in the description. Otherwise, you have everything you need to make all the glass you like. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it and messing around with this effect and tweaking it just the way that I want it. Just because since Apple announced this liquid glass thing and this kind of has become a trend 
Uh, I've seen so many videos for make liquid glass in After Effects, make liquid glass in Blender, make it in Spline 3D, all these random softwares, uh, but I have not seen a good one for DaVinci Resolve, and I think that this is the best one. I haven't found one yet for DaVinci Resolve that I think looks better than this or looks any closer to the actual Apple thing than this. So if you guys like this, the best thing that you could do for me is like this video because it pushes through the algorithm, uh, gets my channel out a little bit more, and that way it might suggest more videos in the future, but you should be subscribing already so you see all the other videos in the future anyways. Leave a comment if you got any questions, any concerns, I'll do my best to get back to every possible comment, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.